What's up, Scallywags? Welcome back to the 3 of 7 podcast. Just glad I got a mic today. Boy, I'll tell you what, we've been podcasting up a storm here lately. Uh, we were up podcasting last night till about midnight. Um, we got a really awesome episode coming up for you guys, interview style. That'll probably be launching out on Monday. We got a basic course coming up this weekend. We got a lot of awesome stuff going on. The Proving Grounds was absolutely amazing with Two Troop this past weekend. Heck, we could do a whole podcast on that, but we're not going to do that today. We're going to, oh, I got Blake here with me. He's got him a mic. Yep. And it's adjusted. <laughs> we're ready to rock and roll. Um, I did a post on my story the other day, and it talk, we, we were talking about the uh, the face mask thing that people's wearing the face coverings that people wear nowadays <laughs> and I know uh, you guys are probably sick and tired of being beat over the head with this conversation revolving around face coverings you can find yourself being sucked into conversations and arguments about this specific subject all the time right and it is what it is it's become a part of our culture it's become a part and, and look the science behind it you can find things that go either way you guys know this I don't know I don't have to tell you this um, but we're going to try to look at it from a biblical perspective uh, at least from one perspective of scripture right uh, I think the way that that this has been really promoted and the way the why it's gained so much traction is because they've sold it as a thing of you're not you're not wearing a face covering to protect yourself, but to protect others, right? So there's all, there's become this righteous righteous thing about it. Um, but you know, whatever. I, I'm not a scientist. There are plenty of scientists that can point you in both directions and present evidence for or not for. We're going to talk about again from a biblical perspective and also from try to approach it from a. Uh, a psych, almost a psychological perspective of what's happening, right? And I haven't heard any conversations come at this topic from a biblical perspective, have you? No. Uh, uh, that's the only reason I'm letting you talk about it. Today. Yeah. If you told me we was going to talk about face masks, I would have just Look, went to the gym or something. Nobody wants to talk about this crap. Uh-uh. Nobody wants to talk about it, man. But, I mean, for one, the, the, or, the, the origins of this conversation came from... When we were at the proving grounds, and I noticed something uh, about an individual there that it really struck me, and, and that's what got me thinking about this. So again, aside from none of us here think coronavirus is not real, we know it's real. I've had it. Um, all right. So aside from all of the that you know the the stuff you hear on the news about face coverings, this is what I saw. We have a a a staff member from the facility that is hosting our event. We paid them to host this, uh, help us host this event, paid them to use their facility basically. Um, and we're, we're doing some uh, elements on uh, some high elements on some, some obstacles that they have there. And so a staff member is having to brief to troop our team uh, in order to put the gear on properly and get, the, get harnessed up for this event. And I'm watching her brief to troop. And she's nervous. She's probably nervous because she's not used to talking to groups of adults. I get it, man. Public speaking or teaching or presenting is not for everybody. No hit on her, right? But she is. She's she's nervous. I'm watching her body language, and you know, she's saying um every other word. We we do that. We, you get caught doing that all the time when you're nervous, all right? And so it's it's a, it's obvious to me and. As I'm watching her go through this, she has she has her face covering uh, down around her chin, and uh, the more her anxiety builds, I, I watch her and she reaches up and she pulls her face covering from her chin and puts it up over her face and nose, right? And she did it as um, as a comfort thing. It's the that's the reason that she did it. Like it made sense for her to have it around her chin because she's presenting us with important information and we needed to see her expressions her mouth we needed to hear what she was saying but all of a sudden it has become a thing now for this particular individual that when she's nervous she can pull it up and it comforts her it's a pacifier 
is the way Blake described it uh, yesterday when we were talking through this stuff. And I just thought, you know, that's a that's a strange thing. I kind of figured it would happen. I kind of fig- that I don't I don't go out and I'm and in our community the the face covering thing is not a big deal. We we it's it's an individual in our community. It's an individual choice, and nobody I don't judge anybody for wearing a face covering, and they don't judge me when we're in a restaurant in the town that we live in. So it's not not a big deal. But anyways, this is the first time that I had seen it actually be used as a pacifier and a, a, a something to hide behind in order to make you feel more comfortable. And I thought, man, you know, that's a, that's weird because when it becomes that, now it's it, it has went beyond the purpose m- medically, right, scientifically, depending on the science you're looking at. Now it's become something beyond that, which tells me, it's probably never going to want to go away because when you take a pacifier away from a child, Mm -hmm. they don't like it. That's what I was about to say. Plenty of listeners have had kids. (laughs) One of ours liked a passy a lot, and it ain't easy to take it from her. That's right. That's right. And I don't know about you guys, but I would like to see all this this stuff go away at some point. And, you know... When I see actions like that happening, and maybe you guys have seen it too, and I'm sure if you haven't actually seen it, I'm sure for a lot of people it it has become this, which is telling me that it's probably never going to go away because you're an adult now and nobody's going to wean you off of your comfort mechanism. Well, people that ride around in their car by themselves with their mask on, why else would you be wearing your mask? It's just like a... you're comfortable wearing it. It's That's like right. When it's cold out, you put on a jacket because it makes you a little more comfortable. Yeah, yeah. So that to me was a, a new issue that I saw with this whole situation, right? Um, it, and then it leads me to to begin to to start thinking through this of like, okay, this has become this is becoming a bigger problem, and and people will. Uh, People have reached out to me and said, Chad, you know, you're you're in a position of influence and and people are looking to you as a as a child of God and and uh, uh someone that you know to to glean wisdom or insight or or uh inspiration from. Uh don't you have bigger things to be talking about? Like, don't you have bigger issues that you that you should be talking about, right? And and the answer is yes, there are other issues. Um, but this particular issue, uh, although it may seem uh, minuscule when it turns into what it is turning into, it is actually a big issue. It is a dangerous mindset. Um, it, it really is. And, and there's a whole laundry list of side effects that I think we're going to see in the younger generations from this whole face covering thing. Right, we need to see each other's facial expressions. We need to have that conversation. It, you know, it's just there, there's things going to come from this proceeding in the, in the future that we don't even know are coming. So this is a big issue. Yeah, this is not something. This is not something that doesn't matter, and it's not minuscule. I would argue that. All right. So I'm thinking through this, and and then it leads me on to these other questions these uh, i'm asking myself first i want you to ask yourself has your face covering become a veil for you to hide behind and if it is you might want to start you're up to you this is your personal choice but you might want to start weaning yourself off of it when you're in a place that you feel comfortable to do so right um i'm not this is not to tell you what to do if it is a pacifier I would suggest weaning yourself off of it. <laughs> All right, start that now. Yeah. Um, uh, the, and it, lead, it leads me to I, and the next question that pops into my head. We're going to focus now specifically in on Christians, uh, children of Jesus, God, followers of Jesus, Christians, publicly, right? People looking at us, knowing what we stand for. Focusing on them wearing a face covering, 
All right. Lord of mercy, I've had I have heard some uh I have heard some just straight up horror stories from from people that enjoy going to the church building to worship about the face covering things and not being able to sing and and all this and that and you know, did, did y'all know that the world is watching us? Do y'all know that we we legitimately have a target on our back that we if the world knows that you are a Christian, when I say Christian, I mean follower of Jesus, the Bible, right? They are looking at you, seeing what you're doing and how you're reacting to a scenario. And is it in alignment with what you say you actually believe in? The world is critiquing you because they want to be able to pick you apart as a hypocrite. That would satis- Nothing would satisfy them more in order to take your <coughs> credibility away. <coughs> All right. <coughs> Sorry, guys. I just swallowed some snuff. Um, <coughs> so, wearing this, I, I want to know, I want to ask you another question, and I asked this on my story the other day. Do we really believe in the resurrection? Do, no, do you really believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Do you really believe that it is impossible for you to die and you have eternal life? Do you, Blake? Yeah. I was reading this morning in uh, 1 Corinthians, and it's talking about about just that. If you don't believe it, then you still owe a price for the sins that you have committed. As simple as that. Mm -hmm. If you believe it, then your sin debt's paid. If you don't, then you still owe that debt. And what are the wages of sin? Death. So, yeah, I believe it. Okay. That's good. I, I, I believe it too. I actually believe that there was a man named Jesus that was God that died on a cross uh literally died was put in a tomb for 3 days and came back from the dead and ascended and now he is in heaven uh with God the Father right God is a triune being Bo- uh, we, body soul and spirit that's 3 of 7 project God is the Father the Son Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit they've all existed they 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 we cannot understand the the concept of of that um unity that they have and how it functions but that's the way it works and i believe that they that 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 actually happened and right that is our god and he rose from the dead and when he rose from the dead he gave us that choose to accept his free gift of forgiveness and reconciliation he also gave us um that that ability to rise from the dead Mm -hmm. right he gave us that gift of eternal life Right, he reconciled us with him, and um, that is our inheritance. Right, yeah. I truly, like, honestly believe that. How many of you guys believe that? Really, I mean, really believe it. Because look, here's the thing. This is why I'm asking you this question. Because when you really believe that, it should change everything. Yeah. It should change everything about the way you live. It should change everything about you fearing death. It should change everything about the way you present yourself. Uh, in public places, it should change everything about the conversations that you have. I mean, for real, it really should. Yeah, so, then if you believe that, you will lean on the Holy Spirit for guidance, how to act in every situation. Might Like there might be some places, we're talking about masks, there might be some places you feel like, well, maybe I need to wear my mask in there. And there's some places where you feel like, no, I don't need to. Yeah. You know, I mean, it, it, it's, I think when you're following the Holy Spirit, things are case by case. The, the standard is that you follow, you, you know, you seek Jesus for understanding and how to act in each situation. That's the standard. And as long as you're doing that, the case by case, it varies. Well, you know, that leads me, that leads me to another thought of, 
I've told you guys before as we talk through this um, face covering issue that, yes, if, if I was independently wealthy, I could get on a stump here on the podcast and say, you should never, ever wear a face covering. You should never do that. Well, that's fine if you don't have to leave your house and, mm-hmm. and like go fly to another state in order to preach the gospel or uh, share a message or go on a mission that God sends you on. Like that's, If you have a loved one in a nursing home that you can't yeah. visit unless you put it on, what's more important, sticking to your guns about not wearing a mask or going to see your mom or your dad or grandparents that are in the nursing home? That's right. A few days or weeks, years, whatever left. And Blake's broke that down before. So you know, unfortunately, we 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 don't all have. We, we're not all in that position in life. I I say unfortunately. I it probably uh, you think you want to reach that position in life, but it's probably actually not a good place to be. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyways, uh, you know, it brings me back to when Paul talks about I have become all things to all people, and that's exactly what Paul is talking about what you just said assessing situations on a case-by-case basis, right? Um, And that's what Paul did. He would assess the crowd on a case-by-case basis, and he would do what he needed to do in order to reach them with the gospel of Christ. I have become all things to all people, and I feel like that's that's the position that I get put in when you know I get invited to come and and share my testimony with somebody or uh, or whatever it may be, and it requires me to go and get on an airplane, yeah, well, I'm gonna if for me to do that, I'm gonna have to become all things to all people, and I'm gonna have to put this thing on my face in order mm-hmm. to get to where I need to go to do the mission that God has sent me on, right? And it's hard, man. It's hard for me to to, to compromise on on this, but I do it anyways. Anyways, I wasn't planning on talking about that. But we believe in the resurrection of Jesus, which means that you should no longer fear physical death. You should you should no longer fear physical death, really, in a real sense. I don't. Death is going to suck. It's an ugly thing. It's going to be uncomfortable. You've lived in this body your entire life. When your spirit leaves it, it's going to be a little uncomfortable. It's all good. It's well, really, we we should, know what it's like to be uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. You should no longer fear anything. Anything. Not just death. I mean, sickness, death of a loved one. I mean, if you really believe that and you trust that in the end, everything's going to work out for the good, it, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Things are going to be good and things are going to be bad. According to how you look at them, there's good in everything. There ain't no sense in in worrying about any of it. Agreed. Agreed, man. So let's get into, now let's talk about specifically looking at one passage of Scripture that I think, uh, uh, I don't know, I think it, it, it sheds some light on this whole face covering issue specifically as I was working through my own mind after I saw this lady that is using her mask as a pacifier, I say, you know what, as we as like professing followers of Christ in the public, in our communities, in, in all the places that we go, um, what does that mean for us to, to then go and cover our face uh, all the time? Like what is that? What what is the what is the the repercussions of that? And I started to think, you know, we are the we are the only beings on earth that were created in the likeness and image of God. Now I take that literally. I I believe that God has a nose and eyes, a mouth, ears. I believe that God has arms, hands, fingers. I believe he took and formed our bodies in his physical image. Like now, whatever. You could argue that if you want. A lot of people say, well, oh, isn't the spirit, the person's spirit, the image of God? And I would say, yes, all parts of us, body, soul, and spirit, are created in the likeness and image of God. That's the way I believe personally. Now, the face specifically. I, I start thinking the when, when people when we look at one another, I feel like the most accurate image of Christ or or God Himself is shown through our face. 
Now, we're going to talk about how that works in Scripture here in just a minute because I can present this argument to you and you can say, okay, Chad, well, if if we are created in the likeness and image of God, why would we, why would we cover any, any parts of our body? Right? Why wouldn't why wouldn't we just walk around naked all the time because we're trying to present? Well, for one, that's the way it was originally designed, right? Until sin entered this circle that we all live in because of something that we did, we screwed it all up. And guess what came along with that? Shame. Mm-hmm. Shame of our bodies created in the likeness and image of God. Shame. That's the reason that we started wearing clothes. Because in the beginning, when it was perfect, Guess what? Temperature was perfect. It didn't rain all the time. It wasn't cold. You didn't need to wear clothes, and you weren't ashamed because you were created in the image of perfect. God. You were perfect. All right? Sin under the world, we started to cover ourselves up. What do we have left? I think what we have left is, again, the most pure image of God is now shown through our face. Our face is where we get all of our expression, we see personality in each other's eye. You can see a lot in people's eyes, right, in their facial expressions, their mouth. This is where our words proceed from our soul, right? They're proceeding from our face. It's where our tongue resides. There's a lot going on up here. And I think that now, personally, this is the most pure representation of our Creator in our face. And I started to think through this, and I'm thinking... You know, I wonder, we as Christians, uh, is it, what, what would, what would God, what does God think of us covering the, covering that, all, like, out of fear, like it's what it is. It's, it's yeah, become it's, a game. It's the reason um, behind it. Yeah, out of out of like, what what does he think of us as? And what does the world think of us as pro- professing quit Christians, representing the image of who we call the Creator of heaven and earth, covering the image of Him, covering our face? Does this make sense? Well, if you talk, it's it's the intent behind it, right? We already said that, so. Let's say you're covering your face because you're going in a big crowd and you say, I'm worried that I might get coronavirus. I'm I'm fearful of getting coronavirus. And you're a Christian and everybody knows it and they see you. In my mind, the only explanation for fear or or what fear is saying is that God, I don't I don't trust you right here. Now there's common sense. I think God gives us common sense to do things in certain situations. But if you really trust God, why are you worried about getting the coronavirus? Even if you get it, don't don't worry about it. I agree 100%. Now so, that, that's extreme for a lot of people, but that is where my head's at. That's that's what I think. And, I mean, pe- someone could have some legitimate arguments and we could sit down and discuss it, but I'm just telling you what I think. I get I get fearful of things sometimes. I get anxious about things. I'm not saying I don't. But when you do, what you're displaying to the rest of the world, to other Christians, and to God and Jesus is that I don't trust you in this circumstance, so I'm going to worry about it and be anxious about it and see if there's something that I could do on my own power to prevent this from happening because I don't trust that you will prevent it from happening. Or I don't trust that if it does happen, you're going to take care of me in the end. Yeah. And I think that's where the problem lies is what you're displaying. It's the whole it's just like, you know, people talk about drinking a beer. They they say Christians shouldn't shouldn't drink at all. And I'm not going to go down this rabbit hole, but I'm but what I'm going to say is that people can argue the fact that if you drink a beer in a restaurant and someone sees it, it puts a bad taste in their mouth. And and so it's it's goes back to like what you're displaying. You're not drinking to get drunk, but what do other people think about it? And the mask I think is kind of similar. Yeah. <clears throat> to boil this all down, and then we're going to dig into what the Bible says about this. To boil this all down, my belief, and to not even beat around the bushes anymore, my belief and my opinion is that if you are a representative of Christ, you should not be wearing a face covering. That's my belief. Just to 
cut all the fluff off of it. Out of fear. Out of fear. Yeah, out of fear. It, yeah, you're right. Because... Just an example, we just went up to Dollywood. They required a face covering. I wasn't happy about it, but my kids wanted to go there, and I wanted them to have a good experience, so I put it on. Yeah. But as soon as, as, soon as I didn't have to have it on, I took it off. I, I, yeah. There was literally nothing in me that said, mm-hmm. oh, man, I'm putting this on. So it was for them, and I gave them the choice. Hey, guys, if y'all don't want to do this because the masks, I'm cool with it. Yeah. But if you want to go have fun, this is what they require. There you go. I like that, man. I like that. Yeah, it's... Like you said, the purpose behind it. Yeah. Um, yeah, if the mission is bigger, right, maybe, may, and that's a whole other conversation yeah. about playing the game because it has become now a game. Like you said, they had the turf zones. Yeah. You stepped in the turf. You could take your mask off. Everything was cool. You could catch your breath, right, breathe normally, and then as soon as you stepped off the turf, you had to, and it's the same at, at the event that we go to. You, you've you been around these people the entire weekend, but you step up to them so they can check your harness and they make you put a mask on for less than a minute. As soon as you step back, they're like, Oh yeah, you're good. It's, it's a total game. Yeah. That, that's all. It's what it's become. It's a whole nother conversation. But you go to, to a biblical aspect of it. You think of communication between humans in really two different ways. Like you got verbal communication, then you have uh, body language, right? Like, you know, with your hands, but more, even more specifically with your face. And you think, I think having kids, really your face is your most pure form of communication because when, when, the, when the kids are coming up and they can't talk, you know what they're thinking and what they're saying by their facial oh, expressions. Yeah. They are communicating to you. Speech is learned. That's something you have to learn to be able to communicate. But if, if you think for a minute that none of us could speak, what would be the most pure form? How would we communicate? It, it would be with with body language. I mean, you even look at animals. When a deer gets frightened, what's it do? Flip its tail up. I yeah. mean, that's that's body language, yeah. you know? And that's so this, what a smile is. That's what a frown is. That's what a long face is. Uh, yeah, you're yeah. exactly right. And it changes the way you talk. I can say something to you, and then I can smile and say it to you, and the tone in which I say it is going to be different. It, I mean, that's even like a that's a business strategy. W- mm-hmm. When you talk with like a customer service representative, they teach them to smile when they're talking to you because it changes the tone of your voice. That's how powerful these are. And I just wanted to preface what you're about to say with that and because that's really the most pure form of communication. And what are we doing? We're covering it up. Mm-hmm. This has deeper meaning. Yeah, and it's the most pure representation, I think, of the image of Christ yeah. in the human body. Yep. All right, so let's re let's dig in. Let's break this down real quick um, in the Bible. And now this is just one example. I'm sure we could dig deeper into this, right, from a biblical perspective. But I just want to read this to you guys and then have a little discussion about it and see what see where it goes. It's not a developed thought. This is not a study that I have done. I just actually looked this up. Um, so talking about the face as being the image of Christ and covering it up and how that's weird. Mm -hmm. All right, now this is uh, Exodus chapter 34, starting in verse 29. Moses has been up on Mount Sinai with God, and God is basically presenting him with the... Ten Commandments, right? So he's conversing with God himself, um, receiving instruction. Now, Moses comes down from Mount Sinai, and starting in verse 29, let's just read through this and see what you think about this, Blake. Blake hadn't even read this yet, so he doesn't know exactly what it's going to say, but here it comes. I want to hear what you think about it. And it came to pass when Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tablets of testimony in Moses' hands. That was the Ten Commandments, right, on the tablets. When he came down from the mount, that Moses wist not that the skin of his face shone while he talked with them. So... As he cut when he comes down, the skin on his face is is shining, right? And when Aaron and all the children 
of Israel saw Moses, behold, the skin of his face was shining, and they were afraid to come near to him because his face was shining. After he'd been conversing with God, his face is shining so bright that everyone around him are fearful even to come near him. And Moses called to them, and Aaron and all the rulers of the congregation returned unto him, and Moses talked with them. And afterwards, all the children of Israel came near, and he gave them in commandment all that the Lord had spoken with him on Mount Sinai. And until Moses was done speaking with them, he had to put a veil on his face. So, uh, let me let me continue on two more verses. But when Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he took the veil off until he came out. And he came out and spoke to the children of Israel that which he was commanded. And the children of Israel saw the face of Moses. The skin of Moses' face shone. It was shining. And Moses put a veil upon his face again until he went in to speak with him, God. So it reiterates this point twice. He comes down, and first of all, when he goes up, or he comes down, his face is shining. The people of Israel are freaking out, right? Why? Because the the image of God is shining so bright from his face. And and they, all these people of Israel, right, they, they're not acting right. They don't know God. They don't know God, Mm -hmm. and it's shining so bright, they can't stand to freaking look at it. So they're like, dude, you got to put a veil on your face. We can't even stand to see the image of God that's shining through your face right now after having this conversation. He puts a veil on his face just so he can talk to them, right? Now, if those people of Israel were in communion and good relationship with God, I wonder if they would have been able to look upon Moses' face. Mm -hmm. I wonder. We'll never know. So he gets done speaking. He goes back up to converse with God again. What does he do immediately when he goes up to converse with God? He he removes that veil from his face, talks to God face to face. He comes back down again. It reiterates it again. They can't look at him, so they have to veil his face again until he's done speaking with them. I'll read the notes real quick, and then we'll have a quick discussion on this. The notes in my Bible, uh, again, chapter 34, verse 35, Moses' face shone or was shining. This was evidently a supernatural glow resulting from Moses' face-to-face encounters with God. His face shone so brightly that the people could not stand to face him unless he placed a veil over his face. There should similarly be a spiritual glow on the faces of believers who are walking in close fellowship with the Lord through his word and prayer. Wow, I believe that. And you know what? This commentary from Henry Henry Morris was written way, way, way before we were facing these issues of veiling our faces in society as Christians. If you are walking in close fellowship with the Lord, have you ever thought about that image of Him shining, that spiritual glow shining through your face? to unbelievers. Have you ever thought about that? I can think personally, I have seen it on other people's face. You know, there's some people you meet and you and you just know what kind of person they are just by their face looks just they don't even have to really say anything. And I think that's what what Henry is referring to there and you know, you can go back through that verse talking, you know, uh, where you were talking about Moses, and I think there's a lot of other deeper things going on there, and I don't really know the backstory behind it, but it's obvious that Moses being in God's presence, you know, like I think there's a little bit of a lesson you are who you hang around there. When he's he wasn't that way before he was in God's presence, he was when he left, and God chose to display 
himself through Moses to the people he was talking to through his face. So it's obvious there that God is is um, using Moses' face to display himself to them. But then you also talk, think about the veil and how Old Testament that was that was common. Like like you, not just anybody could go into God's presence. And when Jesus died, the earth shook and the veil was torn. Yeah. And that's why that's how we're able to talk to God. Yeah, through Jesus. So he is. Jesus is like the... The veil has been removed. That's it. And so, you know, this being Old Testament, even the second, second hand, so to speak, presence of God was still too much for... Was it the people of Israel he was talking to? Yeah. Yeah. It was even still too much for the people of Israel. I know that doesn't really um, relate that much to the topic we're talking about, but I just wanted to give a little backstory what I was thinking when you were talking there. I think the important thing to take from there is that Moses didn't walk around with a face so bright nobody could look at all the time. He got that when he was in the presence of God, and God chose to display that through his face. Henry Morris talks about in his commentary, we should also have a similar glow on our face about it, he didn't know anything about masks. He didn't say anything about masks. He's saying it needs to be displayed through your face. What we're talking about here, the problem is, is that we're covering that up. Whether you have it or not, we're covering that up. And that should it yeah. be. Uh, look, my brothers and sisters, y'all want to go deep real quick? Y'all want to go deep on something real quick? I hope y'all want to, because we go deep sometimes on the 3 of 7 project. <laughs> we haven't went deep in a while. Well, let me go deep with you and present you with a, with a, I, I, I want to say a theory, but it's a little more than a theory. I, I think that, that you could back it up scripturally with a good enough study. Let me just go deep with you on something right here. As we're discussing this particularly, um, that the image of God is shown through our face. Do you think that potentially this mandate or this culture of covering our face could be a tactic being used by Satan in order to stifle the image of God shining from his believers into a very, very dark world? Yeah. Could this be a ta- could this face covering thing be purely a spiritual tactic, a evil spiritual tactic being used against the body of Christ in order to completely cover his image being represented through his children in a dark dark world. Whoa. You know, We're talking about some warfare <laughs> stuff right here, son. Yeah. It's, you know, you, you, to me, it's not going deep. I mean. Well, that's me, deep for a lot of folks, I, man. I know, but it, it it should be common thought. Like, you, you should have already been thinking about that. I would have never thought that Satan would, would no. devise a plan to get us all, children of God, to cover our faces in order to stifle the image of God in a dark world that is getting darker. I, that is a genius thing. You couldn't have expected it or anticipated it, but once it's here, you should have been able to recognize it. You, you know, we as Christians should be able to recognize this. That's what we have done now is recognized it. That's what I'm saying. I mean... I think it's real. I think it's real too, man. Go read the screw tape letters and see how Wormwood and what's other things oh, they're talking about. I think it's I think it's real too, man. And I, that's why you're we're breaking in we're tearing down strongholds right now. That's we what, are tearing yeah. down his strongholds right now, son. Yeah. That's why it's so much deeper than your decision to put one on or not. And and you could even argue the fact, we just said that it's really the intent behind it, but you could argue the fact that, no, it's not the intent behind it, because when you put it on, it doesn't matter why you put it on, you're covering it up. 
whether it was for good reasons or bad reasons, what the principle was. But that's why you got to be led by the Holy Spirit in every decision you make. We're breaking new ground right now. That this this just clicked with me. I, I mean, maybe I've had these thoughts from time to time, but they've never developed. But this has just clicked with me. Um, I presented it as a as a theory, but but I, I, I again I didn't feel good about presenting it as that. I, I I'm literally now believing and in, in my own mind that this is a tactic that Satan has used in order to stifle the image of God from shining from us to a dark world. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that totally. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I think it's... Uh, if <laughs> People are probably going to get off this podcast thinking them jokers is crazy, but I'm telling you this stuff. I believe if we could see what is going on in, in the spiritual realm, the spiritual warfare, that we can't see, if we could see it, I think... I don't think we would do I think I don't think we could do anything. We would be in such shock of like this stuff is really like that that's true. People might hear this and think, no, that's a little far fetched right there. <laughs> but, Even Christians, yeah. Yeah. But you know, I don't know. It's uh if you think it's far fetched, go read your Bible about about some of the other read your Bible about Daniel when he was you know, when he had to do the what they call the Daniel fast where he didn't eat anything pleasurable because he was seeking God for an answer. And the angel coming down met some resistance, and it took him a little while to get to Daniel. Yeah. You know, go go read that. There's a, there's a spiritual warfare battle right there that is explained, and you can see, get a, a small glimpse into what that might look like. You, you're telling me... It, that that I that you tell me that you can believe that a man was risen from the dead, but you can't believe that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. This is this is what's happening. To me, that takes more faith, if you will call it, than it does believing that Jesus rose from the dead. Yeah. I, I think that takes a stronger believing to believe that that spiritual warfare realm is real because we have really no evidence or proof of it. Yeah. But you can apply some logic to the resurrection of Jesus. You can apply some logic to that and say, well, yeah, that, that kind of makes sense. Why didn't the Roman soldier just produce the body? When, yeah. You know, like... That's true. You can apply some logic to that. Go try to apply some logic to some spiritual warfare. Tell me some logic right here that that's some hard proof evidence logic. Yeah. The only logic you're going to find is backed up through the Bible. Yep. Yep. Well, I, I think that this was a revelation for me to identify this as actually a tactic of Satan. Yeah. And uh, I think progressing me personally from from this point forward, this is the way that I'm going to view this whole, uh, this this whole situation, yeah, is it is it is it is as a tactic of spiritual warfare, um, because this place is getting dark, son, mm-hmm. and these face coverings have done nothing but stifle what light there is or was being shown by the body of Christ in society. It's done nothing but veil that, cover it, right? powerful what a what a what a genius to devise a tactic like that yeah you no one could have ever seen it coming no uh -uh. and it's happening it's about time to tear that stronghold down son yeah what's that sign on uh what is it riverside or whatever says uh keep smiling they're acknowledging keep smiling smiling does something for people right yeah like Sometimes just a smile gets someone through the day. Keep smiling, and then what's the next message say? I'll wear your mask. Yeah. So it's it's like, do something good, because we know that works, but also wear your mask, and nobody's going to see it. Yeah. It's like, 
come on. Well, I think that'll be enough for y'all to chew on for the comms check right here. On somebody's about to call me a fool. <laughs> Yeah, that was uh that's good good for me. Um I hope y'all got something out of it. I I hope you can see the truth and and uh in in what we're talking about and I hope you go and do your own study and you ask yourself these questions uh that we've presented and the topics that we've discussed here on this episode. And um yeah, let us know what you think, man. Let us know what you think. Let me know if this clicks with you. If uh if you know somebody that you think could benefit from hearing this, Share this podcast with them, Mm -hmm. this specific episode. Please, please. That's what this is all about. Um, So we appreciate y'all tuning in. Uh, Can't wait to hear your feedback. Hit us up on Instagram. We'll uh, we'll be we'll be we'll be waiting for you because this again is a is a topic that's front and center. So it's gonna get some attention. Oh yeah. So all right, guys. Love you. Enough said.